Welcome to 2460 Today's exercise, assuming we're going to drive it one day, we'll need to start the engine, so we need a starter motor. Um, that's the original Suzuki clutch. Very heavy, very large, and clutch plate. And the original Suzuki flywheel. I don't know what that weighs, but I can just pick it up. With a fairly enormous ring gear on it. And the ring gear um, obviously suits as the original Suzuki starter motor, but the bigger the ring gear, the further you have to put the crankshaft off the floor, which lifts the whole engine up. So a smaller ring gear is better. So under there oh, is a flywheel that someone made for a smaller Suzuki, as it happens, with a smaller ring gear, which puts the crank 110 mil off the, off the floor, which is like a Formula Atlantic or a Formula Ford. Um, which is about right, and on top of that goes a nice little AP Racing five and a half inch twin plate scented clutch, which all, all of which weighs a lot less and make the engine, <coughs> pardon me, more responsive. So anyway, having um, decided on this flywheel, which will lead adapting to the back of the big Suzuki crank, but we'll deal with that later. Um, it moves the, because the ring gear is smaller, the starter motor has to get closer to the engine and there isn't room for it anymore. Um, so the, the, uh, the solution to that, which we'll get to in a minute. Moving right along, here's a starter motor. That's a little starter motor to suit a Formula Ford or a Formula Atlantic, same thing, high torque gear reduction starter motor, very good little units. Um, this flange is bolted to the front of it, which suits a Formula Ford Escort, whatever bell housing. Um, that's not used to us. When we're, that's not any use to us when we're making the engine starter motor halfway down the motor. So we'll get rid of that. And the pinion um, needs to be off down the road here somewhere. But we'll need to use that to build a drive shaft to to reach to the uh, the pinion that's going to actually do the work. So um, that's come off. This comes off. A bit of luck. Some wiggling. And I got this little bit of plate made up. Um, which goes on instead. And uh, I'll show you how that works to mount, mount the um, starter motor halfway down the side of the engine, a reasonable distance from the ring gear. So moving right along, we've got our laser cut bit of tender aluminium attached to the starter motor, what I think is a suitable angle. And the plan with this is that pad and that pad are at the relative heights of these bosses, which Suzuki have very kindly put all the way along the engine. But obviously they don't line up and you can't boil them that way. But um, where do you put the starter motor and further away from the flywheel is better for the drive, drive touch angle, so probably somewhere like about that. And to, to hold it there, I had, I had some 20 millimeter steel square bar I use for jiggers and things, which I mean, it would be aluminium in, in a different world, but this is around the shed, so by putting that there and that there, we should be able to attach the starter motor. Carrying on with the world of starter motors, starter motors here, that's your uh, pinion shaft, which comes out 12 millimeters when, when the solenoid shoves it out, um, and normally pinion goes on there with a bit of a shock mechanism, a spring and a collar behind it and a little clip to retain it, but that doesn't reach to there. But we do need it because it's got the spline inside it. So I'm not going to bother with the shock absorbing mechanism, that's a luxury we can do without. But I will use it sitting there to um, pick up the drive by the spline. And to get over here, Bizarrely, that's the same size there, but a little um, UJ and another one welded to it. That's been shortened because there's not much room here to take the drive over to where the pinion's going to sit and shuffle back and forth. Um, nine tooth pinions here, sits there as you'd expect, and uh, lives in this little housing that bolts to the bell housing, starter pinion housing, we'll call that. And uh, when the time comes, fires out and into engagement with a bit of luck, and back again. 
Um, just need to uh, build some shafts and bearings to tie it all together. Stand by. We've had a slight win here, thanks to the universe. Instead of using that to pick up the spline and then attaching that to it to get the drive out of the starter motor, which has ongoing things to do with that'll push OK, but it needs to be attached to the starter motor to pull it back out of mesh, which involves grinding that and putting a grub screw or something in there. It's a bit bodgy. Um, this little bit, bit of kit's been lying around my shed for about 10 years. It's off a Dallara Formula 3 car, which I thought was part of the gear change, but this end's got a funny little clamp making thing on it, and you look inside it, it seems to have a sort of a bit of a spline thing going on. And not coincidentally, it just fits nicely over there. And I'm pretty sure that's the starter pinion drive shaft out of the old Dallara, which means I can use all that assembly on this end and uh, put one of those next to there and solves that job for me. And these two clamp bolts through here will go through some little grooves I can grind in that spline and ensure that it comes out as well as in. Little win for, for us um, and they're 246T. Two, two, I've also put a couple of 1.5mm or 2mm shims in here to space the starter mode a little bit more that way. It, which gives us a bit more room for this shaft. It also gives me some wriggle room if I need to move it back and forth once everything's connected up because it's going to be quite critical on the uh, final position. So there, we shall progress from there. Okay, start opinion time. There's our start opinion, which has to sit there and move back and forth to engage the ring gear. I'll put a little, press little bronze bush into there. That's our housing that goes on the, the back. It's been uh, clearance to miss the engine block, also a bronze bush. And this little shaft that I made sits in there, or used to. And um, start opinion goes on it, gets welded to it. That's, um, that's a very hard bit of sintered steel. Um, and to weld it on there, it's going to be interesting because I've never, I don't know what sintered components weld like. They're not designed to be welded, but we'll find out. And obviously I can't get it very hot, but it'll go soft. But um, that'll be an experiment. That goes in there. That lives on the back like that. Should do. Oops, that way around. Now a little pinion hopefully can wrap it back and forth like that. Looks okay. Here's our little start opinion assembly shaft. Pretty much finished. Um, it welded really nicely, um, which is nice. But um, important not to get it too hot. So that was welded eight, eight millimeters every half hour and let it cool down again. And you can see the heat marks around the back from the weld that I've managed to avoid getting the teeth hot so they'll still be good and hard. And there's a um, hole through there for the bolt that takes the torque from the starter shaft. You can put that on the car now and see if it all fits. So here's our setup ready for test run. Starter motor, coupling, UJ, little shaft, UJ, bolt to the pinion shaft, da da da. 12 volts on the starter motor, and if I energize the solenoid, see what happens. That's going to work. So ends today's video.